sulfides. We have a brief lesson here, and we're going to name sulfides, we're going to make sulfides, and then we're going to use them. So synthesis and reactions of sulfides, and it's going to be a very brief lesson. This is, again, uh, a functional group that's of relatively minor importance. A lot of you won't even study this in your organic chemistry course, So, but a few of you, it's in a, a few different textbooks, a few of you are likely to see this somewhere during your second semester organic chemistry course. Now I am presently posting several lessons a week to my organic chemistry playlist. And if you don't wanna miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a new one. All right, so sulfides here. So just like a thiol was kind of the sulfur equivalent of an alcohol, so a sulfide is the sulfur equivalent of an ether. So instead of an oxygen between carbon chains, it is a sulfur between carbon chains, and we're going to name them similarly, just like thiols were named similarly to alcohol. So in this case, a little review on naming an ether here. So on ether, you give one side, the whichever side is longer, it becomes the parent chain, in this case propane, and you just name the other side as a substituent. You combine the alkyl part of it and the oxy part of it to to methoxy, as in the case is here. Well, you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to get a parent chain here, which will be three carbons, and then the sulfur and the other carbon will be part of a substituent named as a substituent. And in this case, you'll just say alkyl thio, again, thio for sulfur. And so instead of like methyl oxy, which gets shortened to methoxy, here it'll just be methyl thio, which is just be methyl thio, no shortening of it at all. And so in this case, this will just be, again, named as a substituent. So this is one methyl thiopropane. Cool. And that is all there is to it. I'm not going to take any more time on this. Again, relatively minor importance. Let's look at how we make them. All right, the synthesis of a sulfide is going to be very similar to what we saw for the synthesis of a thiol. Now, if you recall, with a thiol, we just did it via SN2. We're going to do the same thing here with a sulfide. And with the thiol, we wanted to use an SH nucleophile. So we used like sodium sulfide. That way we'd have uh, a sulfur with a negative charge. Again, one of the strongest nucleophiles uh, we know, maybe the strongest. And in this case, you'd end up with that thiol. Well, the only thing we want to change here is that we end up with a sulfide is to replace that hydrogen on the nucleophile with just another carbon chain, like a methyl group or an ethyl group or something like this. And that way on the product side, you just attach a CH3, which, or I should say attach, it's already there. So you formed this lovely new bond here. And so you went from uh, an alkyl halide now to a sulfide instead. And again, that's the only major way we're gonna present for synthesizing sulfides. All right, so the first reaction we're gonna look at, and it's just one of two, uh, but the first one we'll look at is just alkylation, and this is just an SN2 reaction. We said before that sulfur is pretty much the best nucleophile we know of, and even when it doesn't have a negative charge, it's actually still a pretty darn good nucleophile. And so in this case, I'm going to react it with an alkyl halide, and I'm just going to use methyl bromide here, and we're just going to do straight up backside attack. So SN2. Kick off that leaving group. And so now with a neutral nucleophile, you're going to end up with a positively charged product here. and positive charge on that sulfur. And what's nice about this is that this actually now can act as an alkylating agent for something else. So we added the methyl group to it. Well, you can actually go and add the methyl group to something else as well. So if we were to now add some other nucleophilic species to this, So we could go attack that and it would kick off our original reactant now as the leaving group in another SN2 reaction. And we'd now have some nucleophile attached to our methyl group. And then again, we'd have our original reactant back. And so we can look at this from two perspectives. We can alkylate the sulfur. So, but then we can also use the product of that reaction to alkylate something else as well. So that's our first useful reaction for uh, sulfides. So let's look at the second here in oxidation. All right, so if we look at the oxidation of a sulfide, so two steps of oxidation are possible. So after one step of oxidation here, we form a sulfoxide. And after an additional step of oxidation here, notice more bonds to oxygen here, so more oxidized we form a sulfone. Cool, and generically, Hammer is gonna put like oxidizing agent and there's a, a variety of different oxidizing agents we can use here. We could use hydrogen peroxide or any kind of organic peroxide. We can use nitric acid 
or a few others. So I'm just going to leave it generic as oxidizing agent in both cases and generally go from uh, sulfide to sulfoxide is easier than going from a sulfoxide to a sulfone. And so sometimes you got to add a little stronger agent or a little harsher conditions uh, to get there. Cool. And that's it. That is everything involving sulfides here. And if you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to help support the channel. That's how you make sure that other students see this lesson. If you're looking for the study guide, if you're looking for practice problems, practice final exams, uh, final exam review, anything of that sort, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.